In this video, I'm going to show you how you can programmatically extract all US stock tickers from a data source provided by the NASDAQ. I'll show you several different ways you can extract this data. The simplest of which is to go straight to the NASDAQ stock screen here. So there's a stock screener provided by NASDAQ. And if you just don't apply any filters, you can download a CSV full of different information about all the different stocks. Super easy to then load that into Python. And you basically just have to extract this symbol column here. So that's a manual way of doing it. There are some disadvantages that you don't get the exchange that it's listed on. That's not listed anywhere. So Alcoa, for example, is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. There's no indication of that anywhere. So if that information's important to you, we'll have to go elsewhere. Also, this is a manual process, obviously downloading from the website. Ideally, we'd like to automate this and have the computer do the hard work for us so that we can integrate this list of symbols into our trading systems or price scrapers or whatever else we might be doing with this data. And so the next option is to use FTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And NASDAQ have a server where you can just pull a list of all the actively traded symbols, both on the NASDAQ and for other exchanges. So there's this very helpful page here on nasdaqtrader.com, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And it gives the FTP domain that you'll want to connect to, as well as some information about all of the different files contained within them. So for example, this file contains all of the NASDAQ listed securities, whereas this file is all of the other exchanges. And those other exchanges include the ones listed down here. So how do we pull this information from this FTP server provided by the NASDAQ? There are a few ways of doing it depending on your operating system. The solution that's going to work for basically everyone is to find a free FTP client. FileZilla is quite a good one. So just download this program. Once you've got it installed, you can pull it up in a window like this. You'll then want to type FTP nasdaqtrader.com into the host section here so ftp.nasdaqtrader.com again it's just the url that's on the other page i showed earlier for the username and password you do need to provide one but you can log in anonymously so if you use the username anonymous so the word anonymous anonymous and the password you just give an email so I'm going to use anonymous at example.com. So anonymous at example.com. So that should work if I click quick connect here. Yes, it can save the password if it wants. It looks like I spelt anonymous wrong there, which is why it wasn't letting me in just then. If I try to connect again, we'll see that we've now successfully logged in. So it's anonymous spelt like that. Once we're in here, you should see your file system on the left hand side here and the file system for the server on the right hand side. So we can browse around and the directory that we'll be looking at today, although I'm sure there's some interesting stuff in the rest of these folders, is this symbol directory folder here. So you can just click on that and then browse within it. And there are two files you want to download. So there's NASDAQ listed, obviously shows all the NASDAQ listed securities. And then there's other listed. So you can grab NASDAQ listed just by dragging it over there to this folder. And we'll also grab the other listed here. So that's fairly straightforward. They're fairly decently sized text files. And we can go take a look at what those look like on disk. So I'll pull up this NASDAQ listed here. You can see it's got the symbols, the QA, various other details. If you want to inspect this in Python, that's very easy to do. So you can just open up a Python terminal or a Python program. And it's very easy to read these using pd.read underscore CSV. So import pandas as pd. And then we can do df is equal to pd.read underscore CSV. Even though this is not actually a comma separated file, you saw that the vertical lines, the pipes were separating them. 
and we can tell pandas that we want to use that as the separator. So it's NASDAQ listed .txt and the separator is actually a pipe. So that's, and that should work. If I print DF out, that's a little bit easier to read. You can probably also open it in Excel, I believe that'll probably work. And so we can see you get all this different information here. And from here, it's trivially easy to extract your symbol column. If you want to know what all of these different columns are saying, you can find out exactly what they mean by going to that NASDAQ trader page that I showed you before. So over here in NASDAQ trader, for example, we can see the financial status of these different companies. If we go over here, so that'd be this one. Obviously most of them are normal. We can see whether they're ETFs or not, which is very helpful if you only want to trade regular stocks, you don't want to trade ETFs, you can very easily filter those out. And there's also some stocks that are in here just for testing, like this one here, this NASDAQ test stop. So you can get rid of those by filtering on this column. And you can even filter by market category here, which if we go over here is just the category by various listing requirements, if that's important to you. The other file is very, very similar. You can load it using pretty much the same syntax. I'll just show you very quickly here. Instead of NASDAQ listed, it's other listed. And then if I zoom out again, just so I can print the data frame, otherwise the whole thing won't show. You can see, you can find a particular exchange here, various different methodologies for showing the symbols, whether it's an ETF or not. Again, very similar information than before. So that was using FileZilla to extract everything. Another method that you can use if you're on Mac or Linux is you can just open up a terminal window here and you can connect straight to the FTP server just by using the FTP command followed by ftp.nasdaqtrader.com. If I do that, It'll ask me for a username and password as before, but you can just use anonymous, anonymous, and then it'll ask for an email, but again, you can just do anonymous at example.com or something similar. So anonymous, make sure I spell it right this time, at example.com. There we go. So we're logged in, it's allowing us entry. And from here, you can just do regular sort of commands like an LS to see what's going on cd into the symbol directory here and then you can just use get to get a file so get other listed.txt for example that will download the file to whichever folder you had open at the point where you open the ftp so for me that's just going to be my home directory here that's another method of extracting these via ftp which is a bit more programmatic. You could easily make a bash script that does this every night or every other night to make sure you have a list of all the new IPOs and that kind of thing. One final way of extracting the data, if you don't want to mess around with shell scripts or maybe you're running on Windows and you want to do this automatically, is to do this in Python using FTP lib here. This is a small script that I wrote that basically does what I did manually there. So we open up a FTP connection to ftp.nasdaqtrader.com. We do an anonymous login. We set the encoding here. So this is how various text characters are represented in binary. I think UTF-8 should work fine. Well, at least it does on my system. From there, I provide a list of files. So the only two I'm after are these NASDAQ listed and the other listed.txt. From there, we can change directory here. So change working directory to that symbol directory that we were in before. I do a dot D here, so that lists everything out. And then for each of these file names, I want to open the file name on disk. So this file name here is being opened on disk on my machine, and we're writing binary data to it. And then we can use this function here from our FTP server to retrieve some binary data. We give it the retrieve command along with the file name in this F string. So NASDAQ listed.txt will get substituted in here. And we write that to our file object here in our context manager. 
Finally, we exit the server here, make sure everything's nicely cleaned up. And then from there, it'd be trivially easy to use those pandas functions I talked about earlier, like read CSV, in order to extract the particular list of securities and tickers that you're after in a fully automated way. You can use crontab or maybe the Windows task scheduler to do this on maybe a rolling basis so that you can always be up to date with all the US securities that are currently available. So I hope you enjoyed this little guide on how to get a list of all US stock tickers and I'll see you in the next video.